The street theater of New York has really tops. It doesn't really matter where you're sitting, you're going to see someone that's interesting looking or acting. Using letterpress to preserve a moment in time in New York is a really interesting concept. It's taking ephemeral moments and, and sort of preserving it in something that's more concrete. That's what's going to be exciting about this project is those overheard little bits of intensity. I started my career uh, as a photographer. I had been a painter before that. I got this pretty crazy idea of buying metal type and trying to see if we could print. I think, Patrick, you found a press for sale in Williamsburg, and it just sort of seemed like, wouldn't that be a neat piece of sculpture to have? But we didn't know anything about printing. I got really excited about letterpress. And then once we had it, we figured, well, why don't we start using it. Uh, I like the accessibility and the community surrounding printmaking. That's what originally appealed to me. I would say it's like the third time that letterpress has uh, re-emerged and each time it changes a little. Letterpress was, it was a job, it wasn't for art, you know, they made newspapers and everything through it. So there's, a, it's a very strong work ethic rather than this kind of touchy-feely kind of emotional feeling that I get from other types of artists. We're like this small band of renegade printers of a dying industry. The more people like these guys, like Patrick and Willie, that I can help learn how to do letterpress, the more we can all help keep the industry alive. Like it's a, it's a, it has a punk ethos to it. It's an outdated, um, slow, very high-priced, difficult technique, but that's what makes it Great. One press caught on fire once, that was pretty exciting. <clears throat> Not sure exactly what that was still to this day. I've seen so many things that I've attached only in New York. I would come to work on a Saturday and there'd be like a dice game on the corner <laughs> and like these people like selling like fake fur pink coats. There was a there was a man, he was probably in his seventies. He was having a very animated conversation on the phone, on a payphone, which is not all that out of the ordinary, but he was totally stark naked. I had a taxi driver get into a very small fender bender with another taxi driver, and they fought each other in front of uh, the two cabs, uh, just in a fist fight for about a minute, got back into the cars, um, and continued on the trip. Like nothing had happened guy came up to me and he's holding an avocado and he's like, these Ukrainians gave me this avocado and I think there's something wrong with it so I want you to take it. This one clear voice rings out like midway through this confrontation, a thick Brooklyn accent just goes, your whole family's garbage. Coming from Philadelphia before that, we didn't have a lot of uh, extremely wealthy homeless people. You're from Brooklyn, right? You could plant it in your yard. You could throw it at a cop. You could do something with it. I, I, I don't want this avocado. You should take it. It's, I think it's pretty much the most awesome place to live. New York is what it is because it has an ego. You know, Boston's a great city. It's not New York. Philly's a fantastic city. It's not New York. We could totally conquer Boston. I'm very curious to see at the end of this New York Rights Itself project if looking at all of these images that people create involving other people's experience, I'm very interested to see if this looks like New York. It's, it's a cool way of looking at a city, I think. You know, it's not pretty and polished and perfect. It's New York. It's going to sound like New York, for sure, right? Because I think there's something about the verbal play of like these little vignettes that people are submitting. It's like, oh yeah, that totally sounds like somebody walking down whatever avenue or street in New York. The essential element of the entire project is that it's real. I like the, the idea of taking something really ephemeral and, and preserving it in something that's so slow and so physical and so concrete. If we do it right, we'll be able to like capture a moment and like let people hold on to it. New Yorkers in the end, they really do love the city. And I think it's that 
So what makes you a New Yorker is that time when you feel like, you feel that emotion come, come in for you. You know, there's those poignant moments and there's those beautiful moments. But then there's that reality of New York, which is, fuck you, keep moving. <laughs>